Oh, uh, what is going on, my beautiful weebs? It's your boy, uh, Mark. Jujutsu Kaiser Fridays on a Tuesday. I'm a little late, but better late than ever. Episode 13. That's it. Episode 13 of Jujutsu Kaisen. We got. We got left off. Wait, what am I doing? Before I get into this little discussion, my thoughts, opinion. Have you guys subscribed and become an Ascender Weeb? If not, what are you doing? Hit the subscribe button. Come on. Only takes two seconds. A click and a clack. Boom, boom. Anyways, we got left off. You had the boy Kanto, or as Mahito calls him, 703 Cells, or Sorcerer, and Itadori fighting Mahito. Two on one battle. It's it's a it's an intense fight. The music, oh my, the music, the battle music, god ah, damn. <sighs> Saucy. But right now, um, since Itadori has. Oh, it says Mahito uh, touched Itadori, and Itadori made him bleed. Um, Kento's attacks won't do any damage. They're not going to do any damage on him. So it's going to be a 2 on 1 battle. Uh, Kento's. He's, uh, he came up with a plan. He's going to uh, lure him and then just physical attacks non stop. Because they found out that every time he changes his soul, he, you know, soul sh uh, shifts. So every time he, he soul shifts, he uses cursed energy, so in that split second, they got to, you know, physical attacks. So that's that's the only way that they found out that they have to, you know, do some damage on him. But before that, he, you know, throws up some freaking humans. And then Itadori, in order to, you know, he needs to defeat those humans, he needs to kill those humans, because they're humans. They're just, you know, uh... They just they they look different, but they're humans. So he kills them, and then that's they have that's when their plan executes. And next thing you know, oof, he's on the brink. You know, they, they, they're doing the attacks, physical attacks, boom, close range. They're not letting him, not even for one second, letting him get the uh, get his curse energy up. Next thing you know, he says, "I bet I can do it now." And then what happens next? I can see right there on the screen. Domain expansion. Mahito achieved a domain expansion. That's fucking crazy. He's throwing up some gang signs too. That that quick. And that's what Kento says. Like, hey, he's gonna be dangerous if he learns domain expansion. Because the main expansion is, you know, it's just uh, a, a, a trump card. Like, oh shit. And he was, you know, his back was against the wall, you can say. He had like zero time to freaking uh, accumulate some cursed energy. So, you know what? That's what he said. I'm back and do it now. Boom. Domain expansion. And in that domain expansion, like you see right there, he only trapped Kento in there and left Itadori outside. So, right now, Kento's like, he's in trouble. Because not even Kento has a freaking domain expansion. He hasn't acquired, I guess, that power yet. I don't know if he will, but he ha as of right now, he hasn't acquired that power. He's trapped in there. And it's um, in Mahito's uh, domain expansion. And he's pretty much since in the first battle that they fought, Kento and uh, Mahito, he touched him with his palm. So right now, K Kento's inside of his domain expansion, pretty much... He's on the palm of his uh, of Mahito's hand. He's on top of the palm of Mahito's hand. So right now, Mahito, he controls everything. He can destroy him in one. He can just destroy him. So, you know, in typical anime fashion, right before you think the, you know, the person that's stuck in there, as of right now, it's Kento. This, oh yeah, what this problem is, with his palm and his base still so interview with their soul. So right now my uh, Kento can't do anything. But typical anime fashion, on the brink of death, we get a flashback. So we get to learn more about Kento's lifestyle before he became a Jujutsu sorcerer. 
and he was he worked in a company and he hated it that's why he quit and it just sort of shows a flashback of you know of him a lady interacting with him and she's always saying oh you're always buying this sandwich and he told her the only reason why I buy the sandwich because I'll buy it here because at the convenience store they stopped carrying it so I might as well come to the bakery and the sad part this right here man leaving it alone wouldn't hurt it's like this is how like this is how he was in the past he knew that she had cursed you know a cursed energy or cursed energy thing on her shoulder but he didn't do anything about it so I thought like when I was watching it right now I'm like damn this guy's an asshole like damn he can see it and he's not gonna you know she's gonna die and all he did for his last time lifetime was just money this money this money this he's all about the money he didn't care about anything else as long as he made money he was satisfied until he just you know he's like one day he's like I'm done and then he told it like he told the job to make people more wealthy and yet for some reason my job which exists outside that nature human cycle pays better all about the money tells her to step forward oh no oh no okay okay, okay let me backtrack rewind he goes back into the convenience store the lady this lady right here tells him you look tired you haven't gotten any sleep it's like yeah you know work stuff and that and he said, you also look in a little fatigued. She said, yeah, like, you know, I feel like something heavy on my shoulder has been weighing down on me. So, you know, I haven't been able to sleep, this and that. So Kento just, he goes up, he told her to step forward, and boom, destroys that cursed energy. And now he tells her, like, oh, how's your shoulder? It's like, oh my god, much lighter. And this is a turning point of, you know, of Kento. And it's like what he realized, like, dude, I can save people. He says, thank you. And then, boom, right here. I always thought... I was a person with with no concept of reason to live reason for living That's when he contacted Gojo Sensei the goat and that's how he became a jujutsu, jujutsu sorcerer We got I we got a past I was of uh, Kento of how he was in the past and now you know, you know what? He's like, you know what if I die right now, that's fine. I have zero regrets But then the most interesting part comes in the goat Itadori breaks through the domain expansion that Mahito put up. Breaks through and Sukuna, he warned him. Alright, you touched my soul once. Next time you touch it, I'm going to mess you up. That's exactly what he does. He messes. Just like that, he just like snaps. Boom. You see that picture right there. Sukuna warned him. He told him, alright, touch my soul once, that's fine. Touch it again. I'm gonna mess you the f up. Messes him up. Such a Sakuna's such a badass too. See, there is no one in this world more proud and conceited. He lives guided by only his his pleasure and displeasure. And then what Sakuna says, aside from him, my boy Fushigo Megami. Aside from him, he truly doesn't care. So he doesn't care about anyone else, not even uh, Itadori, except for Megami. Fushigo Megami. I wonder why. Does Megami have the hidden power to defeat Sukuna or at least be on par with Sukuna? Because when they fought in the first, when they both fought the first time, Sukuna was like, whoa, okay. You know, if you get that good power up, you can probably do some damage on me. But he still has a Makoto Sensei. But why Fushigo Megami? Why him? Why does he care about him? He don't care about anything else, anyone else, but except for Megami. Interesting. Interesting right there. And then, you know, when the villain is on the brink of, you know, dying, they just, you know, uh, self-explode, self-destruct. Uh, let me make a concept. Uh, in Dragon Ball Z, when Cell was getting beaten up by Gohan, Super Saiyan 2. He just, you know what? He's like, you know what? I have this inside me, boom. Self-destructed, that's my Goku guy. That's the reference I'm making, because that's so similar. That's the similarity that I see. There could be other animes. Oh, shit. There could be other animes. But just this scene right here, him doing that, I'm like, bro, that's a, 
the first thing that came to mind, Cell against Gohan, Super Saiyan 2. This exact thing. I'm like, oh my god, of course, the villain always has to self-destruct. But then, he gets away. They were so close into killing Mahito, but yet, he disappears. Mahito has that chance, and he's gone. He escaped. He escaped death. Once again. Not once again, but he escaped death. For real this time. Now that he knows that he has a domain expansion, who knows how much power he's gonna get. Especially now, now we're gonna, he's gonna be laying down low. Regenerating, recuperating his souls that he lost, his curse energy, and go back to uh, the drawing board. I see how they fight. I see how powerful, you know, Sakuna is. Or how powerful Itadori is, too. And the only reason why Sakuna, I mean, not Sakuna, Itadori even broke into it because outside, it, it's weak. You know, the barrier is weak from the outside, so people can come in. And also, since he his domain, he winded up touching Sakuna's soul. Since he went inside uh, his domain expansion, yet again, since Mahito already touched Sakuna's soul once, he's there again, and that's how Sakuna's like, don't you dare. So I warned you, now face the sock, uh, face the consequences, but he never killed him. He just injured it badly. Because Sakuna could have easily killed him, but I think he just kept him there like hey he's a little slap on the wrist like hey don't do it again and then Itadori's frustrated that you know he had to kill an actual human and then we get here this bully right here facing his consequences for messing with the boy Junpei even though he got his ass beat he's still facing more consequences and also the teacher too for not doing anything the little survey about bullying making it making it an awareness that bullying, bullying is bad. And now Itadori is always contemplating like, I don't understand what a proper death is. Cause good people die, bad people die. He just killed, he just witnessed, you know. He experienced killing someone in this episode. So he has, he's like, I don't, I don't know what's like a proper death. But what he does know is, so pretty much he doesn't understand proper death. But what he does know is that he has people to protect you know you have Nobra, Megami, Gojo Sensei, Kanto um, Junpei the innocent civilians so he has a reason to fight to protect them but he will never lose again that's what he said in this little frame right here it's just him realizing you know what I don't know what a proper death is even Kento said it. I don't even know what a proper death is. It just happened. It's just the way of life. You just gotta deal with it. So now, Itadori got an experience of that. So the only thing that matters right now is to protect the people that I love and never lose again. And that was pretty much it of the episode. We finally get to meet the other Jujutsu Sorcerer uh, class. Mr. Principal of the other Jujutsu Sorcerer School. And we're finally get to learn the other characters. We already did. We already knew about this. The introductions, but now we're gonna actually meet them. But yeah, that was pretty much it for Jujutsu Kaisen. If you guys are brand new, make sure to subscribe, leave a like, and I'll catch you on Friday for episode 14. Peace. <laughs>